today I go about cleaning up this spaghetti jungle here on the front of the TCR and converting it over to this neat and sleek looking DI2 cable configuration. Okay, before getting hands on with the bike, I'll first run through my task list and my project plan for tidying up the cables on my TCR. So first of all, the list of tasks I have here, which I'm going to complete today are number one, well, obviously tidying up the cabling by removing the DI2 Y junction. Number two, I'm going to relocate the wireless module from the seat post into the handlebars. Number three, I'm swapping the bars out from my 36 centimeter bars up to 38 bars. I've got some Pro Vibe DI2 compatible handlebars to put on. Number four, I'm going to use Shield T9 for some anti-corrosion treatment on the bars, given how much I ride indoors and sweat on the bars. And number five, it's some new bar tape. Now DI2 is relatively easy. It's just a case of plugging everything in. And as long as everything is connected, it will work. But it does take a little bit of planning to get it right, depending on your bike configuration. So I thought today, first of all, I'll run through what I currently have on the bike and then what I hope to achieve with the reconfiguration. So first up, what I have here, obviously two levers which are two ports in each, two ports there. I have the bar in junction box down here with two ports on that. I have the climbing shifter over here, which is connected in that direction. And I have the cabling, which is configured in this method. So first of all, I have the climbing shifter, which is hooked into that port just there. This lever is connected to the junction box by routing out the front, underneath and in. Now, the junction box is connected to the Y splitter in this way, it drops out here, around the top, around the back, around the back and into the Y splitter. I'll finish off that in a moment once I've drawn this connector here. It currently goes that way into the Y splitter and that then goes to the back of the bike. So this is the current configuration and it's that Y splitter there or that cable hanging off the front that I'm going to remove. With a clean slate, let's draw that again with the new configuration. So we have two ports over here, two ports in the junction box, two ports down there, that connecting through there. And this is how things, this is how things are going to be configured. So first of all, over on this side, nothing changes here. The shifting module, climbing shifter, still routes in through that way there. This lever routes exactly the same as before, so into the junction box over here, and we are done. Now, here's where things get very, very interesting. And I'd like to thank Dr. Slane for coming up with this solution for me. So it's this lever here, which will route now in this direction. So the cable will connect over here, down the front, internally to the DI2 port. And we route that cable inside the handlebars, all the way across the top, down to here. And we'll stop there. And I'll insert the wireless module here. That kind of represents wireless that goes to the junction box there. Okay, so we have everything hooked up from there. Now we need to get all of this hooked up to the back of the bike. That's done with this other port here, which now will link on here and run parallel with this brake cable, nice and neat, out to the back of the bike. That's the plan, let's get it done. Okay, here we are ready to start the work and today's kit grid includes the following. Two DI2 cables, these are the 1200 millimeter cables that should do the trick for me. I have the DI2 removal and insertion tool. We have some hex keys, some snips, a knife, a leatherman, everybody needs a leatherman, a torque wrench, some scissors, tape and cable ties, my new favorite tool, the Park Tool Internal Cable Routing Kit, Shield T9 Corrosion Treatment Spray, some BBB Flex Ribbon Bar Tape, and the Pro Vibe bars that are DI2 compatible and 38 centimeters wide. First things first, removing the seat post where the DI2 battery is located and removing the wireless module from the seat. And then we're on to undoing all this fine work on the front end here, which includes dismantling all the wires and cabling and tape and you name it. Once the tape comes off, there's quite a lot going on there. Now I won't be touching the brake lines at all today. They stay connected, which makes things a little easier for what I'm about to do. Now 
And finally, onto removing the junction port at the bar end. That comes off, and that cable is no longer going to be inserted by itself onto that side of the bike. Alrighty, the levers come off with brake cables still in play. I'll switch the bars off and put the new bars back on because that's the base of what we'll be working with for the rest of the day. Okay, on with the torque wrench. Levers back on and hopefully in the same place. We try and line those up nice and neat and level. Okay, looks good to me. Yep, sweet. First things first, we'll plug this lever in, route it around the front into the DI2 hole there, and it's out with the Park Tool Kit. This thing is absolutely amazing. The magnetic end goes in and connects to the other magnet on the guide tool. And I'm going to be feeding this guide cable through first. Goes in along the top. Takes a little bit to jump over that, but away it goes. Slowly feeding that through around the impossible corners. few jumps here and we're almost good to go one more bang and we're done we are through handlebar floss is installed now to route the di2 cable through there is a di2 end port on the guide cable plugging that in like so and just slowly guiding that through. This would be next to impossible without this routing kit. And we're through, we're done. People have always told me this kit is fantastic. I never knew why or how until I'd done that. Okay, off with that and on with the wireless module, which I'm relocating. So a little bit of bar tape around the wireless module so it won't rattle around in the bars. Connecting that in line and then just shoving it up the handlebars where it's going to live from now on. Next up, connecting the right hand lever with the same cable as before. That's going to go into the lever, run around the front and into the DI2 port that's already pre-drilled on these bars and then into the junction port A. There we go. We are done. I'm also taking this opportunity to turn the junction port up the right way. It was installed upside down. Now to get the right width for the climbing shifter, I'm going to put on my Garmin or head unit mount first and then put the climbing shifter on right here with the cable ties. Lining that all up. Now the cable ties aren't too bad. You can get them out of the way so it doesn't look like you've hacked something on your bike. There's little ports around the back of that, so once you snip the cable ties, it can be nice and neat. So we have that running there. That's the cable that is now going to be removed from the bike. Next up is the unboxing of the other 1200mm cable. This is the one that will go in the frame from the left-hand lever all the way down to the junction box under the bottom bracket. So flipping the bike over to get to the four-port junction box, Removing this here. And because I'm running the dub bottom bracket, I can't access the four port junction box. It will not come out of there. I can try and pull and twist and turn. And I uh, worked at this for a little while, but could not get the junction box out. So after giving up on that, it's out with the bottom bracket and out with the junction port in that way. If you're running the standard Shimano crank set, not a problem at all. The dial bottom bracket's a little wider, which doesn't give you access to what you need through that small hole there at the back. Okay, spaghetti jungle down here. This is all quite simple. Four cables, one from the front of the bike, one to the battery, 
One to the front derailleur, one to the rear derailleur. Looks worse than it is. But what this was all about is routing that single cable from the bottom bracket up to the left hand lever. Again, out with the Park Tour routing kit, putting the guide cable in, routing that in a method that defies gravity. Routing the cable up once I get that over the bottom bracket shell. There we go, that's locked on. Slowly pulling the guide cable up and I'll be extracting the guide cable out of the hole for the rear brake. There is just enough room to squeeze that through. It could be very troublesome if there wasn't enough hole space to get both in, but with a little bit of tinkering here, the guide cable comes through and there is enough room for the DI2 end. And there we are. We are in more frame floss. Same as before with the handlebars, we plug the DI2 into the end of the guide cable. This time hanging a few cable ties off here so there's no rattling in the frame. There's a lot of open space in the down tube so those little cable ties there stop things rattling around. Okay, DI2 end plug in and that's slowly fed up. Did I mention the Park Tool guide cable was absolutely brilliant? If I haven't, I will now. It's fantastic, saves a lot of time. All right, with that all in place, four port junction box tucked in there, hidden away, bottom bracket, shell put in place, and bottom bracket, and the bottom bracket pushed back in. Okay, an overview of where we're at. We have that lever plugged in with the internal cable that we've ran all the way across here, down here into the wireless module and then into the junction port. Now what we need to do is plug this one in which connects the battery and the rear of the bike to everything else. But we need to do it neatly. Finishing off the back of the bike by connecting the battery again, seat post back in and torqued down correctly and plugging that cable in which connects everything and number five he is alive we are good to go now it's onto the easy part just taping everything down so it's nice and neat there we go and getting that di2 cable to run parallel with the rear brake cable I'm just using the little clip-on adapters here for now to keep the two cables together. I will look at a heat shrink option in the future when I resize those brake cables. Now it's over to the Boshield T9 anti-corrosion treatment. I probably should have done this earlier on, but better late than never. So Boshield T9 sprays on. Covering all the surfaces there. You should stop it from getting that salty, corrosive gunk that happens when you ride a lot indoors. So spray it on both sides. Good coating. And leave that to dry for probably half an hour or so. I've always found the best. And finally, it's onto the bar tape. Covering up, I was gonna say covering up the mess, but it's quite neat. Covering up everything and hiding it all away. And making things look nice and slick on the front end there of the TCR. Right side done, all looking pretty good. Rinse and repeat for the left hand side once everything is in play there. The BBB flex tape, flex ribbon tape has been quite good, so sticking with it, literally. Finishing touches and one final pedal to make sure everything is lined up and nice and neat. Feels good. Bars are rock solid, they're on nice and tight.
and that front end looks very, very tidy. No longer is that one single DI2 wire hanging off the right hand side there. And now in summary, the before shot and the after shot. So there we are, all done, all neat and tidy, and a little bit more work than I'd factored in, given I had to remove the bottom bracket to get to that four port junction. Was it worth it? Well, for me, absolutely. That was a good afternoon of hands-on with my bike, customizing it to make it my own. Now to preempt a number of comments, questions, or queries that will no doubt come through on this video, I'll try and answer a few of them now. Number one, starting off with why didn't I shrink wrap the DI2 cable to the brake cable? Well, I'd need to disconnect one end of the hydro brake cable, slide the sheath on, shrink it up and then reconnect and re-oil the brakes or re-bleed or that's a little bit above me at the moment. It's a project I'll look into at a later date. Secondly, SRAM ETAP has no cables. What am I doing with cables? Well, there's a few answers to that one. One, I like money. SRAM ETAP costs a lot of money. Number two, the giant TCR comes with DI2, so that's what I'm using. And number three, there is one single battery for DI2. I do see that as an upside for Shimano. Once all the cabling is done, you are done and you only have one battery to worry about. SRAM, on the other hand, has a few batteries. Whether you see that as a downside or an upside, it's entirely up to you, but for me, one battery to rule them all. And finally, why don't all bikes come with a neat cable configuration like that? Well, it depends where you shop, I guess, and how much money you're willing to spend for someone to build your bike nice and neat. Typically, a bike such as the Giant TCR from the bike store will come out of the box, they'll plug everything in that it ships with, and away you go. That Y junction and everything is the way it comes, you can, I guess, request some customizability, but again, you're gonna be paying for that service. For me, I bought the part separately, did the work myself. I could have just as easily taken it to the bike store and requested they do that configuration. So if you like that kind of configuration and you want it on your bike, hit print screen, take your bike to the store and ask them for it. So there it is for today, my DI2 recabling project. It's been a long time coming and it's finally done. It was a lot of work, but definitely worth it. It's my bike now and I'll be riding it for at least the next 12 months or so. So I think it looks pretty cool. As always, remember to hit like on this video, hit subscribe to be notified of new videos, and hit join to become a member of the GP Llama channel. It's really appreciated. Thanks for watching.